Hopefully this isn't too loud. No, good. Uh, good morning, or good, yeah, or actually I can say good morning today because it's 11.52. <laughs> um, I wanted to go over some uh, logical, this is what you call apologetics, right? Apologetics means giving a rational uh, explanation of God um, at using logic and reason. Um, there is a place for it in the church. I don't want your faith to rely on the, the, the wisdom or, or, or rationale of human intellect. But I do want to go over some logical explanations of, for the existence of God. Um, one of them is called a cosmological argument, meaning uh, because there is a cosmos, there has to be God. It's, it's irrational to think that there is no God because... Um, is there any... Hey, excuse me, guys. If you're going to sit and talk, please take it outside. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so there is a cos <laughs> this is a cosmological argument for the existence of God. What that means is that God is uncaused. He is the cause of all things. Cosmological means comes from the, the word cosmos, right? So uh, we can look at a theological argument, meaning coming from the word where Jesus on the cross said, "Telos," it is finished, right? So it's it speaks of an aim, um, uh, the 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 aim of, of 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 a thing. Like so, I can say that there, because there's a fork, that somebody's using it for food, so there has to be a person. So it's like a backwards reasoning. When I look at a fork, uh, I know that it has purpose and meaning, and, and it's not aimlessly sitting there. So uh, if I see a fork, I can assume or rationally assume that there is food and that there's a person eating it because that's what the fork's used for. <coughs> so when we look at the universe, we can say that there's function and there's, there's, there's meaning behind the universe because of there's, there's four con consonants. You have the... Um, you have the, the powerful nuclear force or the compelling nuclear force, and then you have the, the non-powerful uh, uh, force, I believe is what it's called. Um, and then you have, uh, um, you, you have um, conscience, right? So you have, there's certain things in the universe that are, that are that, that they're, they're there. We're defined, the universe seems to be fine-tuned to allow for the existence of life. There's gravitational force, and so there's these nuclear forces, the positive and the negative, or the strong and, and the weaker force. Uh, one uh, holds the nucleus together, and, and the other um, uh, will will cause will will decay the another nucleus. So you have the the strong and weak nuclear forces. You have the gravitational force, and were these to be were these to be minutely changed, the universe would implode and not exist. So. Science can, science can, can only have any meaning if we look at it through the lens of God, which is the foundation of all meaning. God is, is pre-existent. He is eternal. He is uncaused. He is the uncaused cause of all things. So we can look and see that there's, there's people, there's a planet, there's earth. It revolves around the sun. Um, and, and there's a universe and it's kind of like a big mechanism or... or, or it, it, they all rotate in, in exact exact order the way God wants them to. Um, so God is unchangeable. And, and how, what does that mean he's unchangeable? Meaning he is perfect. He, he is, he, if he wasn't eternal, then, then he, would be, he would have the potential to not exist. So because God doesn't have any beginning or any end, he's eternal... He has to be all-powerful, self-sustaining. He has to have what's called a seity. And so he is, he is the uncaused of all things. Um, everything else in creation has what's called act, action, or excuse me, not action, um, uh, act, actuality, right? So everything has what's actuality. What that means is, is I'm, a baby is actually alive, but it has the potential to be an adult. So everything in creation has actuality and potential, whereas God has no potential, meaning 
he is all that he can be. He's everything that he is. He's everything that he could be, everything that he should be. And so he, when I say he has no potential, that means that he cannot change. He, he, he is immutable. Uh, he, it's not like he can get better because he's perfect. And so being self-caused and self-existent the, and the cause of all things, uh, except for evil, which is it's kind of a long... All, evil is ontologically, he has no essence. Ontology is a branch of metaphysics. It has to do with the idea of beginnings. And so ontologically speaking, uh, evil is a no thing. Evil is a perversion of what is good. Like I said, the man that, that has a desire to go provide for his family, this is a good, healthy, God-given action and desire. And what happens with evil is we pervert this good desire into hungering and thirsting and lusting after money and being a, a, a hoarder or an idolater. So evil is a no thing. And so, so God is the cause of all things, but not the cause or author of evil. Um, because evil is, like I said, a perversion of good. Um, so he's unchangeable, he's perfect, and, and he doesn't have the potential, he has no potentiality. He is, he is what you call all actuality, meaning he is everything that he could be, everything that he should be, everything that he, that he is. Um, he is the highest being that, that reason or, or intellect can think of, or rationale can think of being perfect and, and absolutely holy. And so cosmologically, because, because we can look around and see that there is a universe, we, have, we know that there has to be a cause of this universe. Um, the fact that I am and that I have actuality and potential, meaning I have the, I, I be, I am and I, I live, and, and I have the potential to, let's say, be strong. And, war, and, but, and so that's what I mean by when I say actuality and, and potency. God is all actuality. He's, he's everything that he, that he could be, like I've said. So the creature, on the other hand, is a mixture of actuality and potency. And so and what that means, like I said, is like the baby gives a good example. An apple is actually red. And it has the potential to be eaten. So when I eat the apple, and I'm getting these things from uh, Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas, sorry. And so the apple has the potential to be eaten. It is red, and it is an apple, and it has the potential to be eaten. And so when I eat it, I'm, I'm actualizing its potential. And, but what actualized my potential? God. So it, we, it all goes back to God. Um, and I know I'm not doing a very good job of explaining these things. I apologize. So... Because God is all actuality, in other words, he's everything that he could be, that means that he is eternal. Because if he were to come into existence at any time, then that would mean that he had potential. And, and, and so when I say he doesn't have any potential, it means, it means that because he's the highest being, the, the perfect being. Um, and so because God is, is all actuality and he's eternal and self-existence and self-caused, he has all power and nothing can, can do anything to him because nothing can make him change. Nothing could, could, could cause him to change. That means he has what's called a seity or, or all actuality or all he, he is all actuality. He's all, he has no potency, no, no potential because he's perfect. Um, he's unchangeable, meaning he's eternal. Uh, he cannot stop or start existing. He has always existed and always will exist. He cannot die. When scripture says that Jesus died on the cross, it's speaking of his, his, from his mother, his earthly mother, he had a human nature, fully human. And from his father, God the Holy Spirit, God the Father, he, had, he, had his, he, he, he is divine and that is eternal. He is, he is eternally God. And, and yet... In a time, he, 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 his humanity died on the cross, uh, but for a second, because his, the death had no hold on him. Uh, the enemy could not hold him because he was sinless. The power of, of death is sin. And so, if, if, because God is perfect, and Jesus is God and he's perfect, the grave had no hold on him. Death had no hold on him because he was perfect and sinless. And so... On the cross, death, evil, 
Satan were judged and, and, and sin in the human flesh, in, in our nature as our representative, was judged on the cross. So in Him and in our union with Christ, it, we died with Christ. It, it, in, in a spiritual sense, we died with Christ. And because we are His bride, we are connected to Him. We are in union with Him.